All right, we're going to go ahead and get started and um, those folks can kind of catch up. Today, we are going to um, zoom in on some fascinating seed structures. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. We're going to start in our wildflower meadow. Um, but we're also going to take a look at some examples of different plant structures and seed structures that we find throughout the grounds at Frederick Meyer Gardens. Um, so before we dive in here to our topic, I do want to kind of go over some, some of our Zoom settings here. So today we're going to practice looking closely at the things that I'm showing you, different specimens and areas of the grounds. Um, so when you see that magnifying glass, that's your cue to look closely. I'm going to be asking you, what do you wonder? So be ready to let me know what you're thinking. So when you see that little thinking bubble, tell me what you're wondering. And where you're going to tell me those things is um, in your chat box. So you should see a little place to um, type in the chat. And my coworker, Megan, and I can... Um, see that chat and interact with you that way. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, our theme this year for our chrysanthemums and more exhibition is naturally. So this fall we're going to be looking to nature's colors and textures and structures, the movement of those colors and, st and structures, and also biodiversity to inspire our garden designs. So today we're going to explore the question, how do various plants get here naturally? So in order to do that, let's um, check in with Megan in our wildflower meadow. Yay, we've got Hi, some everybody. sunshine. We do. The clouds have finally moved away. My name is Megan. I'm out in our beautiful wildflower meadow today. And I wanted you guys to be able to take a look so that we can explore this area together. So I'll show you what I'm looking at out here. And I'm curious, as we look around, I want you to take a look at the textures and the colors and the structures that you're seeing. And then when you're ready, go ahead and just share in the chat, what do you see? There we go. The connection's a little bit better. It was looking like a painting a minute ago, Megan, but now it's, now it's focused. Uh, Gerilyn says a lot of seeds. Gerilyn says she sees a lot, a lot of seeds. Natural yeah, weeds. Natural weeds, grasses. grasses. Try to kind of pan through some different types of plants here. Notice all the different textures. Michelle says she sees a structure for water. Michelle sees a structure for water. Okay. What other colors and textures do you notice? Yep, Michelle sees trees. We have the beautiful fall color coming in. You know what, Megan? Unfortunately, those clouds have beaten us this morning. It's, it's kind of pixelated. Oh, okay. So I think I'm going to come back to the classroom okay. and, show and show some feed from that. Thank you, that though. Sounds good. Thank you, everybody. All right. Let's come back and uh, let's come back in. And unfortunately, we were testing our signal today. And we don't have the best one today. The clouds are kind of dictating 
our uh, ability to show you that live feed, but that's okay. We've got a backup plan. So same question here. I'm going to play a short video. So hopefully you'll be able to see those colors and those textures and different examples and tell me just a little bit more about what you're noticing in the chat. All right. Different shapes or seed heads. Wondering what the round ones are. Lots of texture. Seed heads are taller than the foliage. Awesome, round and bushy goldenrod. See, seeds seem to be at the top of the plants. Awesome, we have um, our, a second grade class is joining us. Excellent, colorful weeds and grasses and false indigo seeds. What are um, some of those things that you are wondering? So now we've had a chance to take a, a look. Now I'm going to ask you, what do you wonder about some of those things you noticed? Let me play it for you one more video here so you can take a look. Let's play one more from a different angle here. Go ahead and type what you're wondering. Oh, we have pink leaves and fall trees. How do the colors form for the flowers? Great question. Are there any animals living there? Are the round ones thistle? What is that sculpture? Excellent questions. All right. So those are all really great questions and we're gonna answer some of those. Um, so, we noticed a lot, you noticed a lot of different textures spread throughout. And then if you noticed a lot of the same plants also, but they were spread throughout the whole meadow. So some of the things that I'm wondering are, how did the goldenrod in the foreground get to all the way over there behind our Scarlatti sculpture? Does anybody see any legs on these plants? We don't have any legs. So how did the, these plants get over there? We've got what flowers are there too. And then Andrew asks, do any of the plants help each other with seed dispersal? Ooh, that's a great question. Wind, animals, insects, birds. So we're making some predictions. Is that a farm? So we are going to zoom in on that seed dispersal, on those methods of seed dispersal. So the way that plants have adapted to get their seeds from place to place. Um, they have different methods. And we're gonna take a closer look at some of those seed samples today and examine those methods. So the first one we're gonna take a look at 
is milkweed. So here's our, our common milkweed plant. And we are gonna take a look at these pods. So these pods that are growing here are the seed pods. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna show you my milkweed sample. And I want you to go ahead and type in the chat, what are you seeing and what you're wondering? So choose either or. So we've got a milkweed pod. I'm gonna pop this milkweed pod open. See if I can get to see what looks what that looks like inside there. Kate says the seeds are slowly dying since it's getting cold. Gavin says it looks like a banana. It's green. Let me pull out one of these individual seeds here. Let's see. What do you notice? Inside looks like feathers. It looks like fur in there. What are you wondering? Gonna get another one. It looks really lightweight. Does anybody have any predictions as to how this seed gets from place to place? How does the milkweed plant spread its seeds? Oh, seeds pop open and the wind blows and seeds go on the ground, Emery. It floats. <laughs> it's very poetic, Lori. Seeds have their nature wings to fly away by wind. The outer part is spiky. So we've made some predictions and we know that seeds need soil water, and sunlight to grow. So if our milkweed plant, if all the seeds just fell from the parent plant, do you think all the seeds would be able to grow? They'd be competing for all those resources, right? So one of the methods that's common among seed bearing plants is wind. So wind is used a lot and we know in Michigan, uh, when during the fall, it can get pretty windy. That's when we get some more rain and wind. And we also notice a lot of those fuzzy little white things floating in the air, teasing us that the snow is on its way, but they're actually, a lot of them are seeds. So this one, I'm gonna see if I can blow it away. There it goes. So these are, can be carried far and wide just from the wind. Like you notice, they're very lightweight and feathery. So our milkweed is an example of wind dispersal. So when these pods get dried out, I, I noticed one of the students said that the, the seeds look like they're dying. They're actually, a lot of the methods are, are drying up so that, they, that this pod can burst open. So it's going to burst open on its own when it gets dry enough. These seeds quite aren't ready. This is a little bit early of a pod, but when it dries out, it will burst open on its own and those seeds will float out. So let's take a look at another example of our, something we can find in our wildflower meadow. Let's take a look at this plant, white wild indigo. So this is what the stalk looks like. 
And then I'm going to show you an example of these seed pods here. Let me get this one going for you. All right. So here's the stalk. What do you see? And what do you wonder? This is the stalk with several different pods on it. You can also make comparisons to the last seed pod that we looked at. The little seeds look like raisins. I wonder why it looks like beans. Let me show you. This one is a little bit open there. They look like an alien structure. Why does it look fuzzy? There's the inside. What do you see on the inside? Looks like dried fruit. Oh, it does. Now you're making me hungry, Kate. Looks like tiny seeds in there. And then we have a question from Deanna. Do indigo pods rely on birds eating and dispersing? Good questions. Mushed beans. Look, inside looks like mushed beans. So these actually have a couple different methods. So we, we saw wind in the last one. Does anybody have any predictions? We have one, predictions from, one prediction from Deanna asking, maybe they rely on birds to disperse. How do you think these seeds, these tiny seeds on the inside of the pod, spread animals you know with those with the comparisons that you said it looks like dried fruit and we have little tiny seeds that look like they would be a very nutritious meal for some birds oh maybe those are thorns there are, are some spikes on the end but they're not very sharp so this one has a couple different methods Sometimes the plants can fall down or tip over. Yep, that's true. So we noticed, um, Megan and I, when we were on the path the other day looking at some of these plants, there was one that was kind of, one of these stalks was hanging over into one of the main thoroughfares at Meyer Gardens. And a lot of the pods on that one were popped open already, whereas the rest hadn't quite been popped open. And I thought about that for a minute. And we have a lot of carts and trailers that go down that path and people are walking down the path. So we, we predicted that these get bumped a lot more. So one of these, obviously when they, get, when they do get bumped, they, they pop open and those seeds can disperse that way. So they pop open and they spread a little bit. They don't quite explode, but they do, when they open up, they throw the seeds. Another thing that can happen is these little pods tumble really well. So when the wind blows, it can knock off some of these pods or when they get bumped and they will roll on the ground if the ground is open enough and then they'll, they'll pop open and spread that way. So a little bit of wind, a little bit of animal dispersal by bumping and then like you had predicted too, the birds also do help with that. So maybe they get into that pod and they don't quite get them all and some of, some of those seeds spread that way. So this has a couple different methods of seed dispersal. So we're going to take another look at a different example. Let me show you. Our next one here. So our red oak tree, 
You may be very familiar with these. So let's take a look at the seed from our red oak. What do you notice about the seed from the red oak tree? What do you see? What do you wonder? A pointy bottom. I wonder if we can eat it. It's an acorn. It has a hat on it. It does look like it has a hat on it, and it is an acorn. Sides are bumpy. Mm -hmm. Good pointing out those textures. Do we have any predictions for how this seed is dispersed? So we talked a little bit about wind. We talked a little bit about animals and birds. Hard twirls on the ground. It is hard. It twirls on the ground. Kicked around when calm, it dries. Looks like a hat on the top with a snake skin around. Wow, good descriptive words, Isaac and Finley. Dale says squirrels bury them. Who's seen squirrels burying seeds in their yard or in their neighborhood? So that's exactly right. These acorns are, are animal dependent. They depend on those squirrels to spread their seeds. Now the squirrels are doing what they need to do to survive for the winter. They're, they're burying that seed, they're keeping it and storing it so that they can go back, dig it up, Oh, I'm sorry, Elizabeth, Ethan, and Emily. I will try to remember that. It looks like it has white dust on it and birds can help bury them too. Yep, so they're animal dependent. Um, and one of the interesting things that I learned about um, red oak trees and some of the other nut bearing trees is they will do what they have, it's called a mast year. So sometimes you'll notice that um, one year there might be a lot of acorns on the tree and then other years there are little or none. And so what the tree is doing is every five to ten years they will have a mast year. So they'll save up their energy and then during that mast year they'll produce a ton of fruit. And this will happen to um, for example, the red oaks all over um, the country in that year, they will have their mast year. And what scientists theorize that the trees are doing is they're producing too much fruit for the animals to eat. So they're going to bury as many as they can, and then um, they're going to not be able to eat them all. So then it will guarantee that some of those trees are going to sprout. So mashed year for that seed dispersal. But also during those other years that aren't mashed years, some of these will get forgotten by animals um, and then those seeds will sprout. And it says, um, Emory was asking, do squirrels crack them open when they eat them? So one of the reasons why they, they bury those acorns is um, they will give it more time to dry out so it's a little bit easier to um, break open. And someone asked if you can eat acorns. Um, you can, you can make acorn flour, but you have to do uh, a little bit of processing with that acorn flour to make sure that it's, it's safe to eat. And it takes a lot of acorns to make that acorn flour. So I wouldn't recommend eating them. All right, so we've got our acorns. Let's take a look at Another example here. Ooh, this one's fun. 
All right, so our jewel weed is found, here's the, the flower plant. This is what the flower looks like. And these are found near uh, wet areas. And they have little seed pods. And I'm gonna show you a little video here. And I want you to type in what you're seeing and what you're wondering when I play this video. So here's a little, um, here's the seed pod that I plucked from the jewelweed plant. What are you noticing? What do you see? Looks really old and pokey. It busted open. Yep, they fling everywhere. One side looks pokey. They're a lot smaller than some of the other examples I've shown you. And now I've got another um, video for you. That slows it down a little bit. So I'm gonna play that one. And Luca, all the flowers are orange, that orange color. So a lot of you notice that it bursts and the seeds are small and they kind of fling everywhere. So this method is different than our others that were wind and animal dependent. These with the slightest touch, these jewelweed pods, that's why I wasn't able to bring a sample in to show you. With just the teeniest touch, they explode. So they're a little bit dependent on animals. I mean, animals can pop them open, but wind can also pop them open. If they knock into each other, they can pop open. Um, and then those seeds actually can spread, the, the one that I burst open spread two feet. So this method is a little bit different um, because they explode. So we would call um, this method explosion and there are quite a few other plants that have um, that seed dispersal method. We've got a lot of questions. Um, it looks, can you eat them and are they fragile? So there are people who enjoy eating the jewelweed pods um, when they're ripe and they will forage for them and put them in salads and the flowers are actually edible too. Um, the, the seed pods taste like walnuts. So they're actually super yummy. Um, but I also did read that uh, not to eat too many of them because they are very nutrient rich and if your body isn't used to eating that type of fibrous material. So so check with parents, students, before you eat some jewelweed pods, but they are popular to forage for. Okay, we've got a couple more examples that I wanna share with you. So we've covered wind, we've covered animals. This is a little bit different of a plant. So we're gonna take a look at our lotus plant. And as you can see, this is located in our waterfall area in the sculpture park. So this is an aquatic plant. And over here to the left, so, so you see the flowers and then you see in the center of the flower, um, once the petals drop off, we have these pods to the left. So those seed pods, these are actually um, the seed pods that are going to grow and develop. And then the pod actually looks like this. So the seeds are nestled inside the pod. So what do you see here? And what are you wondering about our lotus seed pod? 
go ahead and type that in the chat. Oh, is it a mushroom? Good question. It looks beautiful. Looks like a beehive. Yep, there were fish. There were some koi fish in that first picture. Does the pod protect the seed? Good question. Do the seeds sink? Good question, Kathy. Her mind's Michelle. Michelle's class say, says the shape reminds me of a grape. So I did pull out, ooh, we're making some comparisons to some of the other seeds. Luca says the seeds look like acorns. So I was able to grab a lotus seed for you, and it does look a lot like a grape. So does anyone have any predictions as to how they think this seed is dispersed in those pods? Aquatic animals, are the seeds edible for fish? Good question, or other aquatic animals. How do the seeds stay in place in the holes? Good question. Oh, is it similar to the indigo plant? Can you eat them? So one thing I will tell you is the seed is very sturdy. It's a very hardy seed. So I'm squeezing it pretty hard right now. It's a very hard shell, and I don't know if you can hear. That's me knocking that shell on the table. Water, does the water current pushes it along? So Aubrey has a prediction. So spread by water, maybe the current pushes it along. Some, someone did, was able to hear our seed. Oh, and one thing I do want to also suggest, I'm noticing, that I forget, this is my bad, I forgot to tell you earlier, is when you're in your chat box, um, right above where you type, there's a little drop-down menu where you can um, send your chat to, and it says, to all panelists. And if you click that little drop-down menu, you can select all panelists and attendees so that not just I see it, but others see it too, what you're chatting. Is there a seed inside that hard shell? Good question. So what's going to happen with that pod that I showed you? Someone asked if the pod protects the seed. Uh, yes, Emily and Elizabeth and Ethan, um, everyone can see your chat now because you have all panelists and attendees. Carly, we just lost your sound. I think you may be muted. Let's try this. Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. OK, perfect. Might be a little bit echoey without the headphones. So, the, that seed pod, that seed head, is going to dry, and as it dries, it starts to turn back towards the water. So then gravity is going to help it out. Someone asked, how does it get out of the pod? So if you notice this little bump at the end of the seed pod, that's where it's connected to the inside of the pod. So I actually kind of had to wiggle this one out of the pod to get it for you today. Um, but when the pod is ready to release those seeds, when it dries out enough, 
gravity, the wind will blow and gravity will help plunk. This will go into the water. So let's see, we had a question. I want you to type in the chat. Do you think that this seed pod is going to sink or float? We'll get some, some votes. Are you voting for sink or are you voting for float? Got one vote for sink. One vote for float. Another vote for float. Float. Okay, let's find out. Okay, we've got another three, three votes for float. I thought it was gonna float too, let's see. And it sinks. So it sinks to the bottom, but the way that it's shaped, someone predicted that it's able to be moved by the current of the water. So I think it does move a little bit that way. But one of the things that this plant is known for is a lotus plant, a lotus seed, can remain dormant for a very long time. So for years, decades, and actually the, um, one of the oldest recordings is 200 years that this seed lay dormant for. So these have um, the advantage that dormancy means it can remain um, safe through different weather conditions, and when it's ready to sprout, it will sprout. So these have an evolutionary advantage by waiting for the right time to sprout. So that lotus plant or that seed kind of choose the right conditions um, so that it's not competing with the parent plant. It's not competing with muskrats and beavers and other things that might eat the tubers of that plant. So that's a pretty cool fact. Lotus, lotus seeds can remain dormant for a very long time. All right, so we've got water dispersal, wind dispersal, animals, and explosion. Let's take a look at one more. Our last one is jack pine. So this is uh, the jack pine that we have on our grounds at Meyer Gardens. And it isn't a true jack pine, it's a cultivar of a jack pine. So those cultivars are specifically selective um, bred for certain characteristics. So this one's a little bit more sprawly than you might see in the wild. Um, but they have these cones, so let me show you. Here's the seed for a jack pine. So what are you seeing? Type, type in the chat what you see and what you wonder about our jack pine. Ooh, Gerilyn's asking, do these need heat to open? It looks like it has scales and it's smaller than other pine cones. Ooh, it looks like a pine cone, but more blended or blended in. It looks like it fell off a branch. Yes, Austin, I plucked it off the branch a little bit early to show you today.
What are you wondering? Anybody have any predictions? Someone asked earlier, Geraldine asked, does it take heat to open? Looks like an armadillo. It does kind of look like an armadillo, the way that this is structured. So it's bumpy, but I'm thinking of other pine cones I've seen where the, the scales are open. These are not. They are closed. Does anybody have any predictions to how this seed is dispersed? And then just see. Other pine, does it require more heat to open than other pine cones, says Maggie. Andrew says it needs a very strong wind to bust it open. So, so we're having some predictions that this might need to be busted open based on its texture and that, that it's closed. Is it related to a pine tree? Yes, it is a jack pine. You can find jack pines in northern Michigan, throughout Michigan. Akima says, I'm thinking people move it. So some of you have made a reference to heat or fire, and not all pine trees require heat or fire. Um, this is the only one on the grounds um, and not a lot of trees in Michigan are fire dependent, but this one is. So you were on the right track if you were thinking that these, this cone needed to be busted open in order for those seeds to spread. So this is the, um, the seeds inside are protected by this outer shell and sealed with a material called resin. And that resin requires high heat to um, it kind of like melts and then releases those seeds. So that resin needs to be melted in order for this um, pod to open. And so it takes um, anywhere between 120 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit for this um, pod to bust open. So that's why it's fire dependent, but on a very, very hot day, uh, which we don't really see those kinds of temperatures in Michigan, um, but elsewhere, it could get that hot some days, then these could open. Um, but the other thing that makes it a little bit fire dependent is in order for that seed to sprout, it um, needs very little covering on the top of the soil. So less than a half an inch. And it really likes that nutrient rich soil, which you can get from ash after a fire. So in order for these seeds to disperse, we, we would consider these fire dependent. So let's review here some of the different methods that we saw today. So we had um, wind with our common milkweed and our wild white indigo. Those are both spread by wind. Animals by uh, the red oak, the acorn is buried by many woodland animals. And also the wild white indigo, the birds can help spread those seeds. Um, we saw explosion with the jewel weed, um, and also the wild white indigo can pop open and spread its seeds that way. Our lotus plant was spread by water, and our jack pine was spread by fire. So I challenge you to take a look in your neighborhood and look for different types of seeds and wonder about how those seeds could be dispersed. Maybe you can um, take a close look at those features and make some predictions. Uh, please share with us if you do find some interesting seeds. Comment on this video will be posted on our Facebook page. And um, Megan is going to type in the chat, if you are able to pay what you can and support our educational programming at Meyer Gardens, please donate. And also when you exit this, webinar um, of 
browser window will pop open with a feedback form. If you have a minute to give us your, your feedback on our webinar, we'd love to hear it. Um, and we would love to get your input on future programming. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have a great day. Bye, everybody. Megan's popped our feedback form in there. If you want to take a minute and fill that out, we would love to hear your feedback. Have a beautiful day and find some interesting seeds.